Hello, my name is Anthony Dawson with ANSYS, and I'm going to give a tutorial on how to use ANSYS version 14.5 to do submodeling. So to start that, I'm going to go to ANSYS 14.5 and launch Workbench. As it's coming up, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how we can do submodeling directly in 14.5 now as opposed to uh, how it needed to be done in the past through Workbench, which was through use of command objects. Now we are able to do our course or full analysis in Workbench and then uh, through links in the project schematic send that information into the submodel analysis, have that information come in directly as an imported load and go from there. So let's, uh, let's see an example. To start I'm going to grab a static structural uh, and create a module out of it. I'm going to head into geometry here to get our geometry set up. Now luckily uh, beforehand I set up a bracket that will, uh, a bracket geometry that will suffice for what we're trying to do. So rather than have to create that, I'm going to be able to just import it. So let's do that. I'm going to head over here to File. I'm going to choose Import External Geometry File. And go to my desktop and grab bracket.agdb. So upon generation, I'm also going to uh, turn off frozen body transparency. We can look at what we've got here. Very simple bracket with a uh, section cut out here in the middle that is treated as a multi-body part with the other. So they're going to share topology and mechanical. Um, this is where the elbow is. So the idea here is that we will fix the bracket on the back, apply a load here downwards, and uh, you know, in the full model, if we refine too much, we would see a singularity occur here. But we're going to make a submodel of this portion where we can go in and add a fillet and get the actual stress state in there with a fine fillet that wouldn't be suitable for a full model. So let's do it. We've got our body here in Design Modeler, and we're ready to go. So to get started, I'm going to treat this like anything else. I'm just going to launch Mechanical and uh, set up my problem as I normally would for the full model. Now uh, here, I don't need to do anything special for the submodel to take place. Um, in the past, when using command objects, you had to make all sorts of uh, command objects in your system and then also name selections of cut boundaries and things like that. All that is, uh, all that is not necessary in 14.5. So let's get a uh, let's get a confirmation here that we've got a multi-body part, two things, both set to structural steel. That's good. No connections are needed in this. And uh, let's just go ahead and get the coarse mesh since this is our fuller coarse model. Let's have a look at it and make sure it'll suffice. Okay, it looks great. So I'm going to go into static structural here, and the first thing I'm going to do is apply a fixed support to the back. This is where this thing would be you know, bolted to a wall or something like that. And then let's go ahead and come in here and put our load. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to insert a force. We're going to have it go downwards negative, and let's do some big old 500 Newton force downward. Looks great. OK, and then just to evaluate it, I'll ask for total deformation and uh, von Mises stress here. We're going to solve this analysis and watch it go. Okay, so we're all done there, and we can have a look and see that, uh, sure enough, it looks like we would uh, have a high stress state right in here. And uh, like I mentioned, if we refined this, uh, even as is, we would get a singularity since this is a sharp corner, a re-entrant singularity would happen right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this up right here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, now that we're done with this, and this is going to turn into now, um, you know, a full submodeling. With this being the full, and this being the submodel, the new one we're going to create. Let me rename this first. Keep things straight, and rename this full right there. So now I have a choice to make uh, when I'm going to create my next. What I'm going to do with my geometry now, uh, I am going to have two options here. I could drag in a new static structural. And simply, you know, recreate that geometry. In my case, use the same uh, use the same AGDB file um, to go in and modify it and add my fillet. I could also just duplicate this guy, which is what I'm actually going to do. So let me do it here. So by duplicating this, I now have the same model using the same geometry as before. Let me rename this now, sub model. 
My third option would have been to drag a static structural and just share this geometry directly across. Now that's the only that that, on, that option only works if you do not want to make any modifications to your geometry and you're simply going to suppress parts of a multi-body part or something like that. Since I want to not have to recreate or reimport my geometry, but I do want to modify it, I did the duplicate option. So now that I've got that, I'm going to come back in here to geometry and I'm going to make my modification. Modification for the submodel is twofold here. The first and most obvious is suppress the parts that aren't going to be involved in the submodel. So I'm going to come in here and grab this part and say suppress body. So it's gone now. That's great. And now I can come into this guy and I'm going to create my fillet. So the idea here being this is something that in a full model we wouldn't want to actually model explicitly, but here in the submodel where things are a little smaller and easier, we can we can do it. So I'm going to apply it to that right there, and let's go with a 0.05 meter radius. Let's see how that looks. See if it's something that looks acceptable. Oh, it's a little big. Let's go with a tenth of that. Oh, that looks nice. Very nice small little fillet. Okay, so I've got that now. I've suppressed my other part. I've got my fillet. We're ready to move on here. So I'm going to close the design modeler, and uh, now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to open up, and I'm going to say, yes, I want to update this. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do uh, upon the attach happening here is I'm going to make the modifications to get rid of my uh, boundary condition and my uh, applied load from the last model. Since this is a sub-model, those don't apply anymore. Those are for the full model. So we'll wait for the attach to happen. There it is. Okay. And now I'm going to come in here. Notice these guys have been question marked out. They don't even have the parts that they need anymore, so I'm just going to delete them. Okay. And now first thing I'm going to do is get my mesh. I'm going to confirm my geometry. This is single body in the part. That's good. No connections again, of course. So let's get our mesh and let's get something a little more uh, let's get something a little more fine in here. So let's go with like the uh, the fine model right here. We're going to just say the relevant center will be fine for our mesh and see what kind of mesh that gets us. Sure enough, it looks like a very fine model, not the kind we would want to do on the full model, which is the idea here. So that looks good. A few elements across the radius of our fillet. That's great. So now it's time to actually do the sub-model. So in doing so, uh, we need to bring in the information from the old. So what I'm going to do is head back here to the project schematic, and I'm going to take the solution from the full, and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the setup of the sub-model, and that's going to create a link. As soon as that link is created, it's saying I need to update. And upon double-clicking here and saying, yes, I'd like to refresh, I'm going to notice now that after I refresh that, there's something in here called submodeling. It's been added directly into my submodel's static structural environment here. So this is what's new in 14.5. I have the option now to right-click this and say I'd like to insert the displacements from the full model onto this submodel. So I click Displacement. It's asking me a question right here down in yellow, and it's saying, okay, what geometries would you like to scope these displacements to that are being imported? And it's asking me to choose the faces that I want to do so. So it's pretty obvious here. I'm going to choose the faces that were in contact with the full model part, which are these four right there. So I choose those four, and I say apply. They, let up right, they light up nice and red. And then I can right-click here, and I can say import the load. Now, upon doing that, it's going to go back to the other one. It's going to grab this load and bring it in and we're going to get these nice arrows to show us. And with a little understanding of what we were doing in the last, we can see that this looks accurate. Not much displacement was going on up in this area, but out here is where things are starting to bend down from the bracket. And sure enough, that's where we can see the, the, uh, the bulk of the magnitude and the displacement is. Okay, so we've got our imported load. We've got our fine mesh. It looks like we're ready to solve. So let's do that. Alright, that wasn't too bad at all. So we've got a uh we've got a nice salt here for our submodel. And upon looking at equivalent stress, we can see that uh we've got a more detailed answer. I can zoom in here and see that sure enough, with our fillet we've got the stress isolated in there. 
and uh, we've done a successful submodel. Now I will make one note that uh, notice that if I wanted to do a convergence study on this mesh to confirm that sure enough, uh, you know, I have a mesh independent solution. If I try to come in here and do what we sometimes can do, which is insert an equivalent stress uh, convergence tool, it's not there. The reason for that is that with this imported load, uh, the imported load is mesh dependent, and therefore the convergence tool isn't available. However, that's no problem. What we can do is use uh, ANSYS workbench parameterization to essentially do our own convergence study. Uh, a quick example of just how to set that up would be to come in here to mesh. And I could take mesh relevance or one of several other things, element size or whatever I input into my mesh, and I can make that a parameter by clicking this P right here. I can then come in here to equivalent stress and take the output that I'm reading. For example, we would say uh, maximum von Mises stress and make that a parameter. So my mesh has an input parameter. My results object has an output parameter. Now when I come back here, I've got my parameter set on the submodel. And I can come in here and set up the different design points. So in this case, I would increase the relevance slowly, maybe to 25, and 50, 75, and 100. And now this would tell me, and I could get the graph and make sure that uh, that this stress object is uh, that the stress value is plateauing with an increasingly fine mesh. The good news is I'd already done that and confirmed that, sure enough, 1.696 is a good value um, for this submodel. Uh, and uh, everything is working perfectly. So there you have it. That is how to set up submodeling in ANSYS 14.5. Thank you very much.